Video games have two layers of information. There's the game world, which is what we're used to thinking about. And then there's often a user interface that just sort of tracks information that's relevant to a player. So even though you're building your skills as a concept artist, what could you learn by designing a game interface? Welcome to episode 15 of the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 challenges for you to tackle. Like usual, Ryan has made us two briefs. I'll be using the first one here for this demonstration, and that leaves the second brief for your homework assignment. And in today's brief, he's assigned me the HUD, which is the heads-up display, for a competitive multiplayer first-person shooter called Bullet Squad. And in this game, you have a squad of four, and I have to keep that in mind when I'm adding in all of these required elements to the HUD. There's things like a radar, a health bar, a weapon display, a reticle, tactical equipment, and squad info. Now you'll notice these are just requirements listed by function. There is no mention of what they look like, where they're placed on screen, how big something is, or how small something else is. That's for us to design. And the way I like to think about this sort of design work is that it's sort of like having a bunch of plates. And if you don't think about the structure or the organization, this is what you end up with. But if you have some planning and a system, they can look like this, which for many people is just a much better scenario. So the challenge is how do we take this list of elements and arrange them around the screen? And I should say that designing a game HUD is an entire discipline, but the short version is that it's a graphic design layout, just like a magazine or a website, but specifically it leaves this big empty area in the middle of the screen where the gameplay happens. So all the skills of graphic design are useful here, but we're just going to be touching on the basics today. Now, in previous lessons, we've talked about principles of alignment and of containment. Both of these are going to be really useful today. But additionally, what I want to introduce is the idea of proximity. So when we look at this group of dots, they don't seem to have any relationship to one another. They're all individuals. But if I were to put a few next to each other, we immediately assume that these have something in common. The only thing that's changed is proximity. And this applies to all areas of design. So let's forget the user interface for a second and just pretend that we're designing this truck here. Maybe it's part of a Mad Max game. It's some sort of a cargo truck. And we could actually say this has kind of two major areas. We have an area for the humans. They go up here. And then the cargo. That goes in the back. So immediately we have this visual hierarchy. But we could simplify it even further. We could say, okay, within cargo, there's actually four different elements here. So we could say, for instance, there's this crane on top, and then there's three buckets. See here, there's three different buckets. Well, in a sense, there is a hierarchy relationship here. There's the crane, and then below the crane, there are these three buckets. And the buckets are kind of equal to one another. If it's scrap, repair parts, fuel, those are different buckets that the crane might grab an object from off the ground, pick it up, and put it into one of these buckets. And so even just a simple drawing like this one, you can start to divide it into functional categories. And then within those categories, subdivide them. And so there's this underlying logic to the design that these three elements are equivalent to one another. They all relate underneath the crane. And the crane and the buckets all relate to cargo. And so we're using proximity as a way to logically arrange the vehicle. So the way I start this process then is I just look at the list and I think about how can I start grouping this stuff. And after some thought, I've decided that there's kind of two different buckets that I'm going to group this into. At its most basic, we have a bucket over here, which is me. And then there is a second bucket, which is allies. And when I'm talking about allies, as the brief says, I need to know what their status is. And importantly, I need to know where they are. So what I've decided to do is in the allies category, I'm going to subdivide this. So here we have a radar, and then I also have three squad mates. So I could just do each box for a squad mate. And then when I think about each squad mate, I'm going to give myself a little more room here, I could imagine they're probably being a portrait, you know, like a social media icon or something. They also need to have a health bar. So I could maybe put that below each of them. You can imagine they're being three of these right next to each other. I'm just going to draw one. 
But if this is my health bar, this is my portrait, I also need to include their tactical item. This is something like an icon. So if you can imagine over top of all this, there being like a square of some sort with whatever the tactical icon is. And then that, those would go in each of these boxes. You can tell I'm definitely not going for beauty here. I'm just trying to organize the information into a hierarchy. And so what we've got here is almost like those buckets on the truck. We have three different allies. They are kind of equivalent to one another. And all of them relate to the radar, because if you can imagine here, kind of a, a radar this way, or maybe there's a map drawn on it with different status indicators, those conceptually relate to each other. Okay, well then there is me. What do I need to do? I need to have three weapons. I need to display my current health, and I also need to display my tactical equipment. Now since I'm me, I don't need to have a little portrait here. So I'm going to leave the portrait out. What I do need is a big weapon icon somewhere. Maybe that's like that. So this is my first gun. And I have two other guns. And so maybe we sub subdivide this into the bottom rectangle here is weaponry. And so you have the biggest one, that's the current one. And then you have the other guns here and here. And then within each gun, I need to have the ammo counter because they're my guns and I don't want to switch to one that's accidentally out of ammo. So if I imagine a, a rectangle here and it's got a gun of some sort, it's a beautiful gun there. There's a couple different spots I could put the ammo. You could do number. So it'd be, you know, some uh, easy to read big number. Another way to go, which I think is going to look a little bit better, is if we had the bullet counter like this. And then if you can imagine both of these smaller ones also having it, maybe the ammo counter is a little shorter here. And the gun goes like that. And then I also need to have the overlay. This is the, the status uh, piece of equipment that I have. So maybe that icon breaks outside of the main boundary a little bit. So it's got whatever the icon is there. And then you've still got plenty of room for whatever the gun icon looks like here. So this gives me my main gun, my secondary guns, and then I'm going to also make the health really prominent. So you could make the health kind of the same width. So put that just like that. And I think that covers all my bases. So I'm going to clean up my rough draft here. And I do probably want to make these a little smaller when you see them on screen. So maybe they're each in a corner. And you can look at existing games for reference on, you know, how big should text be? Where do heads-up displays usually live on screens? And one thing I'll notice is I actually forgot the reticle. So a reticle is only ever going to be in one spot. It's going to be right here in the center. I don't need to design exactly what it looks like here, but we'll just do that for ease of use. And then there's also, in this case, a requirement that there has to be an ammo counter next to the reticle. So maybe that's right here with bullets like that. If that appeared to be too big on screen, Maybe that would be something that, you know, you'd, you'd put in game, you'd test it, and it ends up being a little bit smaller like that. But what I've done here is I've looked at the overall list of requirements. And in the overall list, there was really no buckets. There was no categorization. What I did, though, is I took those general requirements, thought about, okay, what relates conceptually to each other? How do I categorize these? And that first gave me the two categories. They were the things about my allies, and then there are the things about me. And then after that, just like before, just like with the truck, you take the rectangle, you know, and then you subdivide it. And then you have kind of two main buckets. And then maybe within bucket two, you've got or three elements. And then on and on, just like a website layout, just like a magazine. It's a visual hierarchy, and it helps us really understand the world around us. Okay, that'll meet all the requirements for my brief. But what did Ryan create for your homework? So here, Commandos is a pretty similar game. This is cooperative shooter. It's just got two players instead of four. But the soldiers are traveling through a jungle environment in a modified Jeep. So in addition to the information about the player and the partner character, you'll need to display some information about the vehicle as well. I've included a PDF for download below the post. And I should mention, this assignment, just like you saw in my demonstration, 
it's not about beauty or polish. Your final result could be a pencil line drawing with labels, it could be on graph paper, whatever. Proximity and hierarchy are the skills to practice here. Don't worry about the polish. But have fun with this assignment. And when you're done, I'll see you in the next lesson.